in no time at all, you'll be flying like this. Hello. Welcome to the first part of a mini series on learning to fly the collective pitch radio controlled helis. So you may have flown a fixed pitch heli, stabilised collective pitch heli, or most likely a drone, and you're now looking around for info to keep you from crashing on your first attempt. That's a great idea. You're in the right place, because if you just go out and try and fly a collective pitch heli without learning first, it will probably look something like this. First of all, we'll go over the effects of all the controls, then take off, hovering and landing. This should cover everything you need for your first flight and quite a few flights to come actually because hovering accurately in all directions is surprisingly hard. You need to spend a long time learning to hover well. Even masters like Tarek Al Saadi struggle to keep a heli in one place for a few seconds. Okay, first of all, axis of rotation. This is how we describe the movement and control of all aircraft. So imagine a horizontal line passing left to right through the rotor hub, something like this. This is called the lateral axis and rotation around the lateral axis is called pitch, like this. By the way, I'm using a Mode 2 transmitter. There are different layouts of controls available and possible, but Mode 2 is the most common and probably the best and most logical, I think. Also, helis tend to use fixed wing control surface names too a lot of the time to make it clearer, so I will too. Now imagine a horizontal line passing through the centre of the road hub front to back. Something like this. This is called the longitudinal axis and rotation around the longitudinal axis is called roll. Roll is controlled by aileron. Again, the fixed wing control service name and is the left to right portion of cyclic. Now, finally, on the axis front, imagine a vertical line passing through the rotor hub like this in this direction. This is called the vertical axis or normal axis. Rotation around the normal axis is called yaw and is controlled by rudder. That's right, it's the fixed wing control surface, but it's easier than saying tail rotor, so we'll stick with rudder. Last but not least, by any stretch, the collective. This controls the angle of all the blades collectively, i.e. Oh, yeah, at the same time. If you're normal mode, it also controls the speed of the blades. The other mode is idle up, which you switch to by flicking a switch to tell the speed controller to maintain the blades at a set speed, so the collective only controls blade pitch. Idle up one. Idle up two. Normal mode. This is what you have to do when you get to flying inverted, so you can use negative pitch, but it works better right side up too. So in summary, kind of oversimplified, the collective controls your total lift, and thus up and down. In case you didn't know what up and down means. Okay, so now the big differences between flying stabilised heli, such as the 230S in normal mode, and a collective pitch heli, such as a 230S in idle up, is that in stabilised mode, the directional control inputs you make are to directly control the movements of the heli, whereas with a collective pitch heli, the directional control inputs you make are to set the attitude or angle of the helicopter, and that will indirectly control the movement of the helicopter. Let me explain a bit better. So the fixed pitch heli, to go forwards, when you push the cyclic forward, you hold it forward, and the faster you want to go, the further forward you hold the stick. With a collective pitch heli, you push the cyclic forward to pitch down, like that, and then move the control back to the centre. You'll make these movements pretty quickly. The further you move the stick with a collective pitch heli, the faster the rate of attitude change. This is the big difference, that with a collective pitch heli, you're always moving the stick back to the centre immediately after an adjustment. There are some exceptions, but we'll get to those later, but certainly for hovering, you have to continually make tiny adjustments and move the stick back to centre. So, forwards back, left centre, 
right center, back center. That's the next big point actually, the next big takeaway from this video. The adjustments you make have to be absolutely tiny. It can be a challenge at first to get used to making such tiny corrections, especially for longer periods while you're learning. The movements will look something like this. Okay, the movements you're going to make have to be absolutely tiny when you get to really accurate hovering, something like this. If you're going like this, you'll be all over the place. This isn't hovering, this is what you need for 3D flight. So hovering, you're looking at tiny movements. So you can barely feel it on your skin, the pressure of the stick. Now that's some basic theory out of the way, let's go to the field. Okay, so you're out of the field, but you want to do a few checks first. Make sure your nuts and bolts are done up like under the main gear, under the blades, anything else that uh, might make something go flying off uh, if it's not done up properly, so check all those. Uh, you want to make sure your transmitter battery is okay. You want to check the actual voltage of your flight battery uh, before you go to make sure it has charged properly. You haven't picked up a dead one or something. Make sure your switch is in the correct position, like your hold mode is on uh, when you start. Throttle slash collective is in the lowest position. Your rate switch is in whatever rate you want, probably low if you're learning. Uh, flight mode, a lot of people use idle up all the time these days, but for us, we're using normal mode, especially as the 230S has that in stabilization, so we'll take off like that. Obviously, make sure you're somewhere wide open, uh, there's no one around, um, because things can go wrong very quickly. And if you're flying somewhere with grass, you want to make sure you uh, have a hard landing and takeoff pad. Uh, like this because it won't do your grass i mean it won't do your tail any good uh, if it hits the grass as we come to taking off in a minute you don't want to make any cyclic adjustments while you're still on the ground because it can suddenly tip over so what you want to do is increase the throttle and as it starts to get light on the skids and uh, move around you want to suddenly pop it off the ground uh, get at least a rotor disc a distance above the ground ideally about a meter uh, a meter or two and uh, keep well back so you don't kill yourself if this hits you in the throat or the eyes or something because you can uh, get hurt even with something this small uh, pretty badly. All right, so we slowly increase the collective, don't make any cyclic adjustments on the ground. Use the rudder to keep it tail in exactly. Once it wants to go, get right off the ground. Still in stabilised mode, get away from me a little bit, a little bit of tail wag, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Flick into idle lap 1 to turn off stabilisation, just see where it goes, it's going forwards, so back and centre, right and centre, keep watching it, left and centre, you need to bring it back a bit, so right and centre, back and centre, keep watching it. Left and centre, forwards, centre, right and centre. Don't fly like this close to you in real life. Right and centre, keep bringing it right. Watch the angle of the rotor disc, back and centre. Forwards and centre. Make sure to keep it tail in, you don't want to go nose left, nose right or nose in. Constant, tiny, tiny little adjustments. So we want to bring it right a bit, so right and centre. Back and centre. Right and centre. Forwards and centre. Left and centre, right and centre. Keep it about the same height, a metre or two. Back and centre, a tiny, tiny bit. We're just doing everything really slowly here. Back in the centre. Now bring it back in properly. There's a slight breeze today, but this heli should be able to handle it. Let's see if I can. 
that's it, pretty stable there. Just watch it very closely, don't take your eyes off it. Keep it around the same level. Well, if we bring it right to touch, right and centre, tiny bit, stop it with left and centre. Don't overcorrect, keep an eye on the attitude of the rotor disc. If you overcorrect, you just have to make sure you flatten the rotor disc to keep it level. Okay. Bit of wind picking us up there. Off the surrounding hills. Okay. Just keep watching it. Keep making tiny adjustments and making several tiny movements every second. I'm aiming to roughly keep it around the landing pad. But don't worry too much while you're learning, just make sure you don't overcorrect, that's the important thing. The back and centre. Everything is centre again afterwards. So forwards and centre, down a little bit. I'll say again, do not fly this close to yourself while you're learning. While you're just learning to hover, you want to be further back. So all the controls make sense now because we're nose in, sorry, tail in. Left is left, right is right, forwards is forwards, backwards is backwards. So you want to get pretty comfortable at this before you try other orientations. Okay, now a nose in. So forwards is back, back is forwards, left is right and right is left. You have to concentrate really carefully on this one, but don't try this until you really get it tail in. Or pretty decent. You need to get all orientations before you go flying around in a circle, doing circuits, figure eights or anything like this. Okay, there's nose in. I actually find this easier than nose left or right, but most people find nose left and right easier than nose in. So from nose left, forwards is right, left is forwards, etc. Back is left and right is back from your perspective. Always keep in mind what is your uh, kind of safety movement. So if it starts coming towards me, I'm going right on the stick to get away from me like this. If you've got the 230 s you need to practice going to uh, panic mode or at least normal mode so you've got the uh, self-leveling. You want to practice that in case it goes tits up and you get too much of a bank angle or pitch angle on the save of the day. If you're flying a heli without these uh, extra modes, you want to get used to just going tail in so everything makes sense straight away. So if your nose in and then you start to lose it, just go tail in so everything makes sense again and it's a lot easier. So now right is forwards, left is back, forwards is left, and back is right. And if I start to crap myself, it's coming towards me, I'm thinking left straight away like that. Okay. Now I'll bring it back in. Nice and easy tail in. Watching it very carefully. As soon as it starts to move, make the opposite movement and go to centre. So I'm going to apply this, but if it goes forwards, it's drifting forwards, back and centre. Don't overcorrect, because if you overcorrect and go back too much, it will start dropping and go really fast the other direction, okay? That's why you've got to keep an eye on the attitude of the rotor disc. While you're hovering, you just want to keep it flat, okay? So if you start to overcorrect, flatten the rotor disc and get the tail towards you so the orientations make sense.
and it's picking up slowly. Mini reverse circle, back to tail in. If you've got it set up quite well, it can be pretty stable. Get away from it a little bit. And I'll show you something. See, that's hands off. We've got to keep on adjusting it. Tiny, tiny light movements, several times a second. I want to get it back to landing pad, so Right and centre, tiny nudge. See it's going right, stop it, left and centre. Nice and slowly, right and centre. Just watch it. Rotor disc is flat, it's drifting back, so tiny nudge forwards and centre. Forwards and centre, left and centre. Forwards and centre. You've got to remember that the angle of the rotor this kind of predicts the future about where the helicopter is going to go so if you tilt it suddenly it will start going right but a slight delay so right so if you're going right and you come to stop suddenly over correct it'll start going left pretty quickly How much time we got left? One minute. I'll bring it back in. So, I usually land in idle up these days just to uh, keep my skills up, but Probably best if you go back into normal mode if you're flying this one. Up. Get it over the landing area. As soon as you touch down, hit hold mode for safety. There we go.